hi in this uh, short video series I would like to show and uh, discuss some uh, simple quantum systems that allow us to find out interesting things about quantum world also we'll have some exercises some thinking so sometimes you'll have to pause the video think for yourself and then uh, see the solution or see the how how discussion goes further let's start with a reminder of double slits you remember how in double slits uh, the waves of light for example go through the through the slits like we have got two slits here's one here's another and light going through them moves away from them like from the source one two I drew it not very nicely but generally you've got when it interferes there's interference pattern here on the screen you see some interference pattern and uh, this interference pattern happens because there are two ways for the light to get to each point one and two and those two ways they differ in the path length or more precisely what is important the number of waves that fit on each path or even more precisely it's the phase in which waves come to the end point and if the waves come in phase in other words they jiggle in the same way in sync like they would jiggle in this way when one has maximum the other has maximum the one has minimum the other has minimum we see an interference uh, fringe there is there will be a lot of light this is how you see the screen a lot of light hitting the screen when waves come out of sync so they come in the negative phase yes it's in this way so when one goes up the other goes down when one goes down the other goes up we see an anti fringe so basically we see nothing it's somewhere here we see nothing there is empty space and then there will be another fringe again nothing another fringe again nothing and so on to the other side you remember interference pattern and how how they are formed but in this case of double slit experiment um, there is a little bit uh, messy things happening uh, many paths that take us to many different points to continuous what we would like to we would like to examine even much smaller much simpler system than even this what could it be we could try to look at just a region of our double slit screen where only two things are present darkness and light so there is light where I drew blue and there is uh, nothing here yeah just one piece um, constructive and destructive interference we would like to imagine that uh, examine that in order to do that uh, what we want what we want our system to have uh, two properties it should have minimal amount of paths just two paths leading to particular point and we want to have maximal control of the length of the of those paths we would like to be able to change the relative uh, length of those paths or in other words we would like to be able to change a relative wave number it's not clearly sp spelled but it's wave number or we would like to uh, control the phase difference between the two paths and such a system that allows us to do it you can think for yourself what allows us you know, to do such an experiment you may pause the video even now but the system that allows us to do it is called max zender interferometer uh, generally every interferometer in some way does it there's just two paths and uh, there's a lot of control over your path but max zender interferometer uh, allows to do this type of experiment very explicitly and vividly how it looks like so we've got a laser that shines light through just light goes forward then it hits beam splitter 
Yes, I call it PS1. This is the beam splitter. It's uh, a thing that divides lights into two into two parts. Basically, it's semi-transparent mirror. Uh, half of the light. You can control, of course, how much of the light goes into one path or to another. You can control it as you wish, 90%, 10% or whatever. But here we have 50-50 beam splitter, which separates the light into two paths. One that goes up, the other that goes to the right. Then we've got mirror here and mirror here. I drawn them in such a way, it's like a plate plate and beam splitter is drawn in this way and the main idea mirror just changes the direction of the light and then the light gets recombined on the second beam splitter here recombination on the second beam splitter and again it is able to go out either through or reflect and go out here or here towards detector number one or towards detector number two. Usually detectors are drawn in this way. It's like a thing that catches light and uh, a wire. Thing that catches light and the wire. That's the most uh, general setup for Mark Xander Interferometer. In the next video we're going to see how this thing works in more detail and how interference is created in such a device.